Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the NECA Aliens Private William Hudson vs. Xenomorph Warrior 2-pack of figures. Now, just like we got with Hicks, we now have Hudson with his helmet on versus a battle-damaged alien warrior. So, a lot of the same with this pack, a little different, but another one I was excited to pick up. I'm definitely done getting these two specific Marines, but you know, it's been a little while since I purchased just the earlier versions of these guys and you know what it's actually been a while since I purchased anything NECA because it's been kind of a lull lately so I was more than happy to see this swinging from the pegs at my local Toys R Us so let's dive right in and check out this two pack with our Xenomorph here there's not a whole lot to say it's very similar to the ones we've gotten before the same basic body rehashed again once again we have a redone upper torso with the blood splatter effect we have two explosions going off on his chest this one with some very long stringy goo coming out it's a translucent kind of neon -y, but a very heavy brown paint i went back and looked at the prototype images and it did not have this much brown in there in those images i'm curious to see whether it's something that was universally done across these figures or if i just picked up a bad example of it because i didn't really pay attention at the store but on the plus side it looks to be just a paint effect over a translucent plastic so i believe i probably could take like an acetone or something and remove some of this paint if I wanted to. But the top big burst I really like. I like the gooey effect of it. This lower one not so much because it has this kind of black plastic at the bottom. I guess it's supposed to be the skin rupturing but it just doesn't have as good of an effect. If you look at it from this angle of course it's fine but once you're around to the side of it it really just kind of looks bad to me. If they would have put some of this brown paint on it to really make it look like the skin had been pried back I could have gone with it a little more. Unlike our last battle damage pack, this alien gets a clean head sculpt, just a totally normal one. And the paint on this guy matches the original release we got of this figure a little bit more with the black base and the brown, but I believe the brown is a little heavier on this one than it was previously. And I've noticed on parts of it, especially the underarm here, we've gotten some nice blue detailing going on. So kind of a combination between the two primary paint schemes they've given us. But I really do love NECA's alien sculpt here. It's very well executed very well done he has the rubbery diaper down here to allow articulation i like that the blades on the arm are connected to the hand like they were on in the initial release of these figures he's got all of his tubes in the back soft rubber of course this top one is removable so that you can articulate the head back a little further he's got his nice long tail here the hook at the end nicely detailed legs with, of course, those really creepy alien toes going on. As I said, I've reviewed this exact figure several times, but it's a very good sculpt. I'm not sick of it yet. It's cool looking. And as I said before, I'm not army building these aliens. I'm not buying more than one of any specific version of it. I'm not going to bother trying to pick the genocide pack back up just to get repaints of them. I didn't get that extra alien from the last wave. But these battle damage ones, I think, add some character. I'll definitely keep picking these up if they keep doing new ones. For articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so you can get side to side, up and down with it. It's a little stiff and a little hindered because of the stuff around the neck. The jaw will hinge open there. The inner tongue can be pulled forward, nice rubbery plastic there, looking really gross and slimy and as it should, really. <laughs> Stuff that back in there. The arms are a pin and socket joint. They go forward, back, and out to the side. Now, my shoulder here was very, very stiff. I had to leave it in hot water for quite a while to get any range of movement out of it, and it's still not great. I think there might be some plastic buildup in there that's actually causing the problem, but the more I work it, the better it gets. Once again, I've said it before with these figures, don't force the joints. They break very easily. Hot water, hair dryers, they're your friends. Heat up the joints if they're not willing to move easily and work them in slowly. Swivel at the upper bicep. He's got a double joint at the elbow, which I really love on these figures. You can also rotate on either end of that, but that's really not where you need to rotate. Do it up at the upper arm. It keeps the sculpt looking better. And of course we can rotate and hinge at the wrist. 
have a ball joint at the mid torso with a great range of motion. Pin socket legs forward back out to the side. We can also swivel them. Double jointed at the knee. A ball joint here at the ankle. And a nice toe hinge. Plus, bendy wire all through this tail. We can move it any way we need to. Moving on to Hudson, we get the expected accessories. Get another pulse rifle. Same thing we've had before. Really nothing new to talk about on this, but I still love the sculpt. I love they've incorporated some silver on it. The green paint's not Nice. The strap on it's pretty darn good. NECA did a very good job on this weapon. I know we're going to be seeing it quite a bit as this line continues, but I really do dig this one. And then we get the motion tracker. It's got the strap on the arm up there. We've got the readout on it, the little trigger, and all the appropriate do fatchets on it. This is one I don't think I'm going to bother putting it on this version of Hudson. I have like every other Marine that came with a motion tracker carrying it, and to be honest, I don't feel like they all need to have a motion tracker on them. Glad I have it for the option. If you hadn't picked up this figure before, now you have it with everything, so I won't say that's a bad thing, but I just don't think I'm gonna be displaying mine with it. And just like the helmeted Hicks beforehand, the Hudson figure here is the same as the previous release from the neck down, so why don't we just start from the feet up and we'll get to the new part last. Of course has his boots on there. I love the detail they've done on the boots on these Marines. I love that they painted in the eyelid the browns and everything. They're a little long in the toe, but I can ignore that for the amount of detail they get in here. Is his leg armor coming up, his knee pads, his standard issue camo pants going on there. We have his belt with all the little pouches on it, which comes around and connects to the suspenders, the harness, whatever you want to call it up here. He's got little doofadges hanging off his belt. I forget what this is. I think it's something in the film. He has his knife hanging down here. We, of course, have the welder back here. Now, it's funny, because all of these come with this, and all of them are detachable. Eventually, I guess I should display a figure actually holding it, because I'm going to run out of ways to pose him with the guns eventually. Got all the straps and everything on the side of his armor. The unique markings up front, so we have the glory skull with the knife in it, name Hudson, Louise, which I believe was Bill Paxton's girlfriend at the time. Coming around back, we got the contents under pressure, dispose of properly, little eyes up here, and let's unplug his light for a minute. I forgot to cover that in accessories, but we have some bullet holes and some scarring up here on the shoulder, which looks very, very nice. This guy's Marines patch on his sleeve, the rolled up sleeves here. This is actually a separate piece, and when I first opened the figure, it was kind of moving around a little bit, but fortunately, it can't move too far away from where it's supposed to, so that's it's never going to be much of an issue. He has the wrap around his wrist over here. He's got his tracker watch, the bandage around his elbow and upper arm, his American flag patch on his sleeve. As I mentioned a minute ago, he does come with the same light that's kind of become standard issue here. Still a nice little accessory. I'm glad they come with them. They're all coming with them now. But his peg for this has actually been the easiest to get in. Had a lot of trouble with some of the more recent figures, but this one pegged in very nicely for me. No real fight in it, so I appreciate that. I don't know if it's a intense upgrade to these figures or if it just kind of happened and I got lucky but I do appreciate it now moving on to the head sculpt the new part on this figure I really dig it I really really like where they went with this the first face we got was that game over man scared face this is just funny he's just yelling snarling intense I really dig it I don't think it looks like Bill Paxton tons and tons but I think it's really decently done I love the open mouth the detail in there the teeth and the tongue, the way they painted his lips even. A lot of good paint detail. He's got some stubble going around the bottom. And I had a lot of paint slop on a lot of these figures at my Toys R Us. Just marks in random places, drips in the hair. So definitely be careful if you do pick it out in a store because these were looking sloppy. He of course has the hook under the chin. Now I show it on my Hicks figure that you actually can connect that. And I haven't pushed it too far on this helmet, but this one because his mouth is open almost seems like it's going to be harder to do because it's going to have to connect kind of back behind the chin instead of a little more forward like Hicks does. Of course I have the little flap here at the back of the helmet and once again the helmet doesn't look like it's on there all that well. It's a little sticking up. Not as bad because Bill Paxton did not have the fluffy 80s hair of Michael Bean, but it still looks a little odd. He's got his camera up there. And if I bring in Hicks, you can see the helmet is a completely different texture. It's very similar in the sculpt, but there are some differences that I'm seeing. And it just has this very rough texture. It almost reminds me of the vent holes you get on a Band-Aid, if that makes any sense. Just kind of has that slightly porous, rough look to it. 
it's decent, but it makes this text really hard to read. It has brain dead, game over right here on the side with some other art that I cannot make out. And then I only know what it says because I know what it's supposed to say. We have Hudson stenciled across the back, but very hard to read with that texture and also the dark camo swatch right underneath it. But you know what? I actually really dig this helmeted version of him. I think this is a very successful figure overall. For articulation, he has a ball joint in the neck so you can look up and down, side to side, tilt his head, all the good stuff. Slightly hindered because this armor plate on the back will rub against the light and cause some issues, but oh, Overall, you can get them into pretty much any pose you want with the head. Pin socket shoulders, they go out to the side, forward and back. Swivel at the bicep, can bend at the elbow. You could also kind of rotate once again, but that's not really where you're supposed to make the rotation. The wrist will rotate as well as hinge in and out. He has a ball joint at the mid torso, so you'll forward and back, side to side. Really well done, not very hindered by the armor at all. He, of course, does have the diaper down here for the legs, so he can go forward, back, out to the side, and rotate rotate with very little hindrance, double joint at the knee, ball joint at the foot, and the toe articulation. And also some decent detail at the bottom of his feet, which is nice. And just for comparison's sake, if we bring in new and old Hudson together, you can see there's a big difference between the expression on his face, and I'm really digging the aggressiveness on the new one. Also, the paint on the older one seems a little more faded, so we definitely have a bolder colored Hudson here, which I kind of like too. So here we have both of our two-pack sets of alien figures together, not counting the genocide. So this is technically the third two-pack we've gotten from aliens from NECA. But I like the two of these together. They had them on display, I think both at Comic-Con and Toy Fair together, and they looked really cool in NECA's diorama, and I think they're gonna look really cool on my shelf together. I like the juxtaposition between these two battle-damaged aliens. I prefer the original. I love the head-exploding effect, even if it is very limited for pose ability and everything, and you definitely wouldn't army build that figure, not that it'd be too easy to. But this new one, it's a little more simplistic, a little more restrained, but I like it. As I said, I am curious to see if the blood effect is weird on mine or if that's how it's going across the line and if so i may try to do some kind of repaint to it because i'm not particularly happy with how brown it is and the more i look at it the more i am unhappy with that brown but as i said i think i could remove the brown and at least have that translucent green underneath so that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Hudson? I think this is the better of the two Hudson figures. I really, really dig this one. I like the facial expression, the more aggressive facial expression. He comes with all the same accessories as the previous one, and the body's pretty much the same. So we're just talking about a head swap here, really, and that color upgrade, which I think is really actually very nice. But I'm digging the Hudson figure a lot, and I think this is the better of the two two-packs that came out, and I think this is the better Hudson that's come out. So overall, a lot of win in this two-pack. So I'm going to recommend it. Uh, nothing super high. I'm not enthralled with it because it is re-releases with minor tooling changes, but I dig it. I think it's a pretty nice two-pack, and it's really not too badly priced. I found mine at Toys R Us. They're finally starting to restock NECA, and... This thing did not have a price on it, and just a weird packaging note on it. They put little feet on the clamshell packaging that it was in. The feet are almost shredded on the bottom, and went right over where they had the barcode scanner on it. So none of the price checkers in the store, or at the cashier, would actually read the barcode. It had to be coded in manually to check it, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. But it came out to 30 bucks, which is not bad at all for a two-pack like this, especially seeing that I was getting pretty worried because there were some kick-ass two figures sitting right next to it for $21 a pop. That had me fairly worried that NEGA had just gone through the roof in price at Toys R Us. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also follow me on Facebook, link below. And until next time, it's been our Outside the Box Reviews. Game over, man! Game over!